That's what I do. I don't do long distance. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, do this and get your VO2 max going, baby. You just saw me to 100 meters plus 50 meters, and I came over here. What I am doing is training the type 2X muscle fibers. You have three types of motor units and fibers. Type 1, which is slow, endurance. Type 2A, which is a mixture of power and endurance. And type 2X, which is pure power. We lose the type 2X first. Therefore, we have to maintain those in longevity. We are not training for a marathon. Peter Tia is telling you to train like a marathon runner. That's not the same thing. You're not training to compete in a marathon. You're training to compete in longevity. You need to maintain and preserve the type 2X. Those are it connected to your VO2 max. Once those drop, your VO2 max drops with it. I hope you understand what I'm saying. It's not cardiac output. It is, but it originates from the lost motor units. I'm going to explain all this to you in my upcoming video. Let's go, baby. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking on a major claim that has misled the public for years. A study titled Survival of the Fittest, VO2 Max, a key predictor of longevity. The scientists in this study argue that VO2 Max is the strongest predictor of lifespan. Sounds convincing, right? But there's a huge problem. This claim falls apart when you look at what actually controls VO2 Max. And that's exactly what I am going to expose. This is specifically what I'm debunking today. VO2 max decline with age is due to cardiovascular limitations, number one. Number two, mitochondrial dysfunction is the reason for skeletal muscle aging. And the third thing I'm debunking is endurance training can increase VO2 max by 15-20% at any age. I am going to prove to you that motor units, not VO2 max, are the true key to longevity. Scientists ignore the real cause of VO2 max decline, motor unit loss. And once I expose these flaws, you'll never look at VO2 max the same. Let's start with the first one, the VO2 max cardiovascular myth. This is what the study says. VO2 max is primarily limited by cardiovascular function, including maximal heart rate, stroke volume, and arterial oxygen delivery. Why this is completely wrong? Fact number one, the heart and lungs only deliver oxygen. They don't use it. Fact number two, muscles consume oxygen and motor units control muscle activation. And fact number three, if motor units are lost, VO2 max drops to zero, even if the cardiovascular system is perfectly fine. I mean, let's look at this. If VO2 max was purely cardiovascular, then a person with a perfectly healthy heart but no motor units should still have a high VO2 max, right? But they don't because VO2 max is limited by motor unit availability, not the heart. Let's go to the next one, the mitochondrial dysfunction fallacy. What the study claims, common structural and functional changes in skeletal muscle are likely related to muscle mitochondrial dysfunction. Why this is completely wrong. Fact number one, mitochondria don't break first. They decline because motor units stop activating them. Fact number two, if you keep motor units firing, mitochondria remain functional. Fact number three, strength trainer older adults have a healthy mitochondria because their motor units are still intact. The study wants you to believe mitochondrial dysfunction is the cause of muscle aging. But here's what they never asked. Why do mitochondria stop working? The answer is motor unit loss. Keep your motor units active and your mitochondria stays functional. The next one, the VO2 max training ceiling. What the study claims. VO2 max can improve significantly at any age with endurance training by approximately 15 to 20%. Why this is completely wrong. Fact number one, they never asked why VO2 max stops improving at 15 to 20%. Fact number two, the reason is simple. There are no motor units left to recruit. Fact number three, if VO2 max were purely cardiovascular, it should improve indefinitely, but it doesn't. Ladies and gentlemen, endurance training does not prevent motor unit loss. It just delays the inevitable. If you want to fight aging, you must preserve motor units, not just the more cardio. 
Now let's go to something else. I'm going to completely dismantle the argument that cardiac output is what drives VO2 max. This is one of the biggest mistakes in fitness and longevity science. And the entire world has been misled. Here's the catch-22 that exposes the VO2 max lie. Scientists argue that VO2 max is driven by cardiac output, meaning the heart is what dictates oxygen consumption. But here's what they never consider. Cardiac output itself is influenced by motor units. When motor units decline, cardiac output declines with them. And when cardiac output drops, VO2 max drops, creating a vicious cycle of decline. So this is the catch-22 they ignore. Motor units control oxygen demand and utilization. If they disappear, VO2 max must decline because the body has no mechanism left to consume oxygen efficiently. Let me break this down. The chain reaction they ignore. Let's go step by step and show why losing motor units directly reduces VO2 max. Step number one, motor unit loss reduces muscle mass and strength. As we age, motor units die leading to loss of muscle fibers and reduced strength and power. Without functional motor units, muscles cannot contract efficiently, leading to lower movement efficiency. Step number two, reduced muscle activity decreases muscle pump effect. What is the muscle pump effect? The muscle pump effect is one of the biggest contributors to venous return. When motor units fire, muscles contract, pushing blood back to the heart, enhances circulation and supporting cardiac output. Fewer motor units equals weaker muscle contractions equals weaker muscle pump equals weaker venous return. Step number three, decreased muscle pump reduces venous return. The heart relies on venous return to maintain stroke volume and cardiac output. If venous return declines, the heart can't pump as much blood per beat, leading to lower cardiac output. Step number four, reduced cardiac output equals lower oxygen delivery. With weaker circulation, less oxygen-rich blood reaches working muscles. But wait, what happens when oxygen delivery is reduced? The body compensates. This will lead to step number five, the dangerous compensation. The body tries to compensate for reduced oxygen delivery by extracting more oxygen from the blood. This leads to decreased venous oxygen saturation, which creates tissue hypoxia a state where certain areas of the body don't get enough oxygen. Now this takes us to step number six. Oxygen extraction compensation equals reduced exercise capacity. The body has hit a limit. The more it extracts oxygen from the blood, the harder it is to sustain high intensity movement. This leads to reduced endurance, slower recovery, and ultimately lower VO2 max. This takes us to step number seven. Lower VO2 max equals accelerated aging and physical decline. With less muscle mass, weaker cardiac output, and reduced oxygen utilization, the entire system falls apart. The result, faster aging, reduced mobility, and lower survival stress. The bottom line, motor units dictate the entire process. Motor units don't just affect VO2 max, they dictate it. Without motor units, cardiac output declines. Without cardiac output, oxygen delivery stops. Without oxygen delivery, VO2 max collapses. Scientists say cardiac output is the key to VO2 max, but cardiac output itself depends on motor units. This is the cash 22 they don't want to admit. This is what they claim. VO2 max is determined by cardiac output, not motor units. The truth, cardiac output is influenced by motor units. If motor units are lost, cardiac output declines, directly lowering VO2 max. The next claim, endurance training improves VO2 max by strengthening the heart. The truth, endurance training only improves VO2 max if motor units are still available to use the oxygen. No motor units equals no oxygen utilization equals no VO2 max. The next claim, VO2 max is the best predictor of longevity. The truth, motor unit retention is the true predictor. Without motor units, VO2 max doesn't exist. Take a look at these graphs. On the left, we have the VO2 max decline graph from the study. On the right is the gradual loss of motor units with aging. Now tell me, do you see the pattern? This is not a coincidence. It's cause and effect. Scientists will tell you that VO2 max declines because of reduced cardiac output. 
But the real reason is staring them right in the face. Motor unit loss directly matches the decline of VO2 max. Less motor units equals less muscle activity. Less muscle activity equals lower oxygen demand. Lower oxygen demand equals lower VO2 max. It's that simple. This study wants you to believe that VO2 max is the key to longevity. But if that was true, we'd expect endurance athletes to preserve their VO2 max indefinitely. Instead, they hit the same 15 to 20 percent ceiling we talked about earlier. And why is that? Because motor units are disappearing. VO2 max can only be as high as the motor units allow it to be. These two graphs expose the truth. Motor unit loss is what drives a decline of VO2 max, not the other way around. And if that's true, then why is all the focus on VO2 max instead of preserving motor units? Because they got it backwards. Let me close with these words. I want to be clear. I am not telling anyone to stop endurance training. You should absolutely continue training your VO2 max. However, longevity and training for a marathon are two distinct things. For longevity, you must put the cart before the horse. Motor unit loss causes VO max to drop, no matter how much endurance training you do. For longevity's sake, you must train your motor units first and your VO2 max second. This means prioritizing explosive movements like sprints, box jumps, and plyometrics for both upper and lower body. These exercises help preserve fast switch motor units, which in turn maintain oxygen demand, cardiac output, and ultimately VO2 max. Most endurance athletes train endurance first and maybe some power training as an afterthought. It has to be the other way around for longevity. If you reverse this priority, training explosive power first and endurance second, you not only maintain your VO2 max, but retain the foundation of youthful movement well into old age. Train the cause, not the symptom. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. I hope maybe this will have you thinking. See you soon in my next video.